Now at 9, Governor Parson comes to Southwest Missouri to sign a bill aimed at protecting waterways from waste. Plus, the state of Missouri implements a new rule for anyone looking to change the gender listed on their driver's licenses. And Pitt State offers students a new way to access mental health services. The four states most watched news starts now. This is KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. I'm Tanya Bach. Missouri Governor Mike Parson stopped in McDonald County today for a ceremonial signing of legislation that modifies permit requirements and exemptions related to Missouri fertilizer and clean water laws. For community members in McDonald and Newton County, the issue hits close to home. KOAM Samantha Walker has more on the importance of the bill in Southwest Missouri. House Bill 2134-1956 may sound like any other bill that goes through the Missouri Legislature. But for residents in McDonald and Newton County, like farmer Adam Perryman, it's a step in the right direction. Just the crowd that's here today shows what significance and how much it matters to the people in the community. I mean, it, it's not... It's not a well-known thing other than if you sm smelled it. And the smell ha really has nothing to do with the problem. The bill modifies permit requirements and exemptions related to Missouri fertilizer and clean water laws. These bills are of special interest to community members who have expressed concerns about wastewater storage basins, also known as lagoons in the area. Concerns have been raised for years about the potential impacts of these sites, but they came to a head after a storage basin company spilled more than 6,000 gallons of sludge in October of last year. We don't, we don't want this to end up in the water and, or any of the minerals that can't, the heavy metals, the chemicals that can't be absorbed by dirt taken up by plants or uh, crops. If, it, if that stays around, I, I mean, that can have detrimental effects for years upon years, if not ever. Area representatives like Dirk Deaton have been working on potential regulations for these lagoons for years. He says it's an exciting moment to finally see action being taken on a state level. This bill protect, protecting property rights and the water resources of the state from you know, misapplication, overapplication of certain waste streams really originated right here in McDonald and Newton counties in southwest Missouri. And so we're doing it for the people, and so it's great that uh, the governor would come down here and, and sign it, kind of where it really all began. Several local groups formed out of concerns surrounding the sludge. One such group is the Stop Land Use Damaging Our Ground and Environment, also known as Sludge, which Perryman is a part of. He says while the signing of the bill is a huge step in the right direction, the work is not done. We're just now getting started, really. I mean, the... Any, anybody that's ever worked with an attorney before knows that those bills, they don't stop. We need support from everybody. We need your voices. Please be encouraged to learn. Find out what it is. Reporting in McDonald County, Samantha Walker, KOAM News. Despite the legislation passing, organizations like Sludge are remaining active to continue monitoring water safety in the community and bring attention to their concerns. Well, during the bill signing, a group of McDonald County students got a front row seat to witness the event. For Jonathan Holes and his government class, the event represents more than just a field trip. It's a living lesson. He says many of his students may never have another opportunity to witness a bill signing in person. I wanted them to be able to experience the, the cooperation between the two branches. You know, you have the legislation, which obviously creates the bill, uh, and then they have to work it through, which was nice because they talked about going through the representatives and then the, through the Senate, and then how that bill actually becomes a law by Governor Parson being able to sign it. That group of diverse students featured members of the high school marching band, cheerleaders, FFA members, JAG members, and students from Pineville Elementary and Pineville Primary Schools. Missouri residents must now provide more documents when trying to update the gender on their driver's license. A state revenue department policy change now requires residents to provide proof of gender affirming surgery 
or a court order to update their listed gender to approve the change. Previously, the state just required doctor approval. LGBTQ plus rights advocacy groups have criticized the policy shift as having been done secretly. Well, Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty joins us now with a first look at weather. Yeah, and it definitely turned out to be a nice one once again for us today. 85 for a high. Look at our average heights, 90 degrees. So all week long, we've had temperatures that have hovered below our average high, which is really good for the last third of August. Temperatures right now, most of us are sitting still mid 70s. We're going to drop back lower 60s once again later on tonight. Pretty much clear skies. Not a whole bunch is going on. Not a whole bunch is going on across the entire central plains. I would say the main weather story is our temperatures will slowly start to warm back up. Now Thursday still looks pretty good. We're looking at mid 80s, but once we get into Friday, we get back right around 90, 91 degrees as we head into the afternoon hours. We're also going to introduce some thunderstorm chances as we head into the weekend. So we're going to break all this down for you coming up here in just a bit. All right, thanks, Doug. Community members and school officials in McDonald County cut the ribbon on a brand new storm shelter at the Rocky Comfort Elementary School today. The newly completed storm shelter, which will also serve as a multi-purpose room, is rated to withstand an EF5 tornado, providing a safe space for students, teachers, and staff. Now, this facility is the only public storm shelter in this part of McDonald County, making it a crucial resource for the surrounding community. I'm real excited about this one. This is almost like the, the community that, that's so isolated. They're the outlier. They're further away from um, any significant town than any other campus that we have. So it's real exciting to have this one out here uh, with our students out here as well as the, the families that live in this area. The new storm shelter is part of a $21.5 million bond issue passed by McDonald County voters, including storm shelter construction at five other schools across the district. Pitt State students will have access to free 24-7 online mental health counseling for the very first time this year. KOEM's Melissa Alexis has more on how this benefits students. It's right at your fingertips and available 24-7. Jack Bandman is a first-year student at Pitt State University that knows how the first time away from your support system and home can take some adjusting. If you haven't met your people yet, it might be hard to, you might wake up at night or you may not be able to sleep because you're just stressed out and uh, you don't have anyone to talk to. You might need someone to help you through things and just someone to talk to can be good. And having that 24-7 is a good thing for students and a good resource. Anna Cisneros is a senior that remembers how Pitt State's mental health services benefited her when she was a sophomore struggling with stress management. I was too stressed with classes because um, my major is construction so it's like a lot of math and I um, wasn't too um, confident in myself and doing really good with those classes. Taylor Panzer, the Wellness and Student Advocate Services Coordinator at Pitt State, says this 24-7 online mental health service is especially helpful for students that have busy schedules and limited free time. All students would have to do is access their TELUS app. They have five minutes, they can't get to a therapy appointment, or that's later in the day and they have this big exam, they can quickly go online and chat with someone. One of the benefits of the online mental health service is that it's offered in Mandarin, Spanish, English, and more which breaks down barriers for more students, including international students. Reporting in Pittsburgh, Melissa Alexis, KOAM News. And through this service, students can choose phone, video, or chat to speak with a counselor. Coming up, how a new blood test could help improve diagnoses for Alzheimer's disease. The number of people diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease is expected to rise over the next several decades. It's a concerning factor with the disease as the fifth leading cause of death among people 65 and older back in 2021. But testing patients for Alzheimer's can be costly and difficult to do without a hospital setting. Fox News' Kevin Uresky takes a closer look at how the results of a new study are providing hope that blood tests can be used to more accurately and quickly diagnose patients. When it comes to medical issues impacting health and wellness, doctors say early detection is key for people to get proper treatment faster. This also applies to diagnosing Alzheimer's disease. According to the Alzheimer's Association, nearly 7 million Americans are living with the disease, with a staggering 
13 million expected to be affected by 2050. While traditional tests to check for signs of Alzheimer's already exist, neurologists point out several setbacks. Those tests include cerebral spinal fluid tests, but that requires undergoing a spinal tap or an amyloid PET scan, which uh, requires a specialized brain scan. The results of a recent study, however, could be a game changer. Researchers in Sweden gathered blood samples from more than 1,000 patients being evaluated for cognitive symptoms. This test uh, measures levels of tau and amyloid in the blood. Scientists say the new blood tests were able to predict an Alzheimer's diagnosis with 88 to 92 percent accuracy among participants. Doctors say blood tests like these could be done in primary care clinics instead of a hospital setting. With blood tests, I think that hundreds of thousands of people could be tested for Alzheimer's disease. While the study needs to be replicated across more diverse populations, researchers are hopeful these new blood tests can offer more affordable and timely results in the future so patients diagnosed with Alzheimer's can receive drugs more quickly to start slowing the impacts of the disease. Kevin Uretsky, Fox News. Now, emotional support dogs are often used to help veterans and pediatric patients, and now health advocates are using them to help inmates struggling with mental health. The special canine named Mello was initially trained to sniff out narcotics, but was later assigned to the Therapeutic Inmate Management Unit for the Ventura County, California Sheriff's Office. The two-year-old Labrador Retriever has been bringing smiles and comfort to prisoners at Todd Road Jail, where authorities say one-third of the inmates there are dealing with a psychiatric disorder. It's nice to get any little bit of peace in mind you can get in here. They're more willing to let us help them. I've seen fewer fights. Officials say Mello's presence has helped cut down on psychotic episodes and outbursts at the jail. Well, Doug is next with a complete look at your forecast and later a former Pittsburgh Purple Dragon is named as captain for a Division I football team. Well, of course, it turned out to be another great day for us today. Temperatures are uh, fantastic across the region. Really, we've had a pretty good stretch over the past several days. Nice shot of our Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex Tower Cam. We're looking at downtown Joplin off toward the northeast through downtown. Looks pretty good for us at this point in time. It's going to be pretty calm as we go through the overnight hours tonight. Lower 70s across the board. Very comfortable. We'll drop back lower 60s once again later on tonight. Plus, look at our dew points. So these are in a degree fashion. It measures how much humidity is out there. Now, when these climb above 70, in the summer months, it gets very sticky. You get into that muggy to soupy range, but we're sitting in that pleasant to not bad. And that's where we're going to be once again as we go into the daytime hours for us tomorrow. 73 right now, east northeasterly winds at about 5 to 10. And let's look at our temperatures over the next couple days because we start a slow warming trend. Partly cloudy skies, lower 60s to start. There could be a random sprinkle out there as we go through the daytime hours tomorrow. Upper 70s by noon. Most of us will top out mid 80s once again. Very similar to what we did see today. Tomorrow night, clear skies back into lower 60s once again. As we go into Friday afternoon, a little bit hotter. Most of us are going to top out right around 90 or 91 degrees. Not hot, uh, but right about where we should be for this time of the year. Day planner on Thursday, 61. 78 by noon, 83 by 4, high temp of 85 degrees, so another great day. That's what we made it up to today. We have clear skies. Nothing is going on across the entire central plains. We're still watching big dome of high pressure kind of shoving its way back toward the south and to the west. And around it, we get these little waves that rotate through, keeping us at least with chances for occasional showers and thunderstorms, which we are going to see by the weekend. Here's Friday night. Band rolls through, then a hot, hot Saturday, partly sunny skies, mid 90s. Another band of showers and thunderstorms Saturday night into Sunday morning, and then again, hot and humid once we get into the afternoon, partly sunny skies. Let's look at Monday, morning thunderstorms, and then again, partly sunny skies, hot and humid, mid 90s 
once we get into the afternoon. So with those rounds over the weekend, we'll have to see where those heavier bands set up. Looks like the heaviest will be central eastern Missouri, but a lot of us could pick up a quarter half an inch, maybe a little bit more than that, which hey, it would be perfectly fine. We do kind of dry out on Tuesday, hot, Wednesday, hot, but once we get into Thursday and Friday, we get a cold front that starts to advance in. So this is going to give us better chances for rain late next week. But the big key here, it's also going to cool us down a bit as we head into the holiday weekend, because not this weekend, but next weekend is Labor Day weekend. 85 on your Thursday again. Could get a few sprinkles, maybe a random shower. 91 on Friday, mid 90s as we head into the weekend, hit and miss storms um, up to 97 on Wednesday. And then we start to cool back down a bit as we go into the holiday weekend. But overall, pretty typical for the last third of August. Thanks, Ted. Coming up, a federal judge sidelines a plan to ban non-compete clauses from employment contracts. A federal judge says a government rule banning non-compete agreements for most workers cannot take effect. Fox Business correspondent Kelly Sabiri reports. A federal judge out of Texas says the Federal Trade Commission does not have the authority to enforce, quote, substantive rules regarding unfair methods of competition, like non-compete agreements. That's a major shakeup considering one in five workers is affected by a non-compete, according to the FTC. The decision from the agency came down in April. What was once used to keep high-level executives at their company and keep their insider knowledge there within their respective places of work has made its way to job agreements of low-income workers. The FTC's move is part of the White House's goal to give workers opportunities for better pay and other benefits. The agency estimates banning non-compete agreements will lead to new business formation, enable workers to increase wages by an additional $524 a year, and lower health care costs by up to $194 billion over the next decade. Fox Business reached out to the FTC on the ruling. They tell us, quote, we are disappointed by Judge Brown's decision and will keep fighting to stop non-competes that restrict the economic liberty of hardworking Americans, hamper economic growth, limit innovation, and depress wages. We are seriously considering a potential appeal. A few states already have laws that either limit non-compete agreements to people who make a certain income or in other cases like Minnesota where they're banned entirely. In Chicago, Kelly Saberi, Fox Business. Well, baby boomers and Gen Xers are more likely to see shortfalls in retirement than their millennial or Gen Z counterparts. A new study concludes that's because they drew the shortest straw in a retirement savings transition. It's shifted toward a defined contribution system in which workers are responsible for putting away the lion's share of the money and deciding how to invest it. Researchers say that move left baby boomers and Gen X with less time to accumulate savings. Well, a new study has found supermarket baby food aisles are packed with non-nutritious foods that contain too much sugar and misleading marketing claims. Researchers analyzed 651 foods for children ages 6 months to 36 months. 60% failed to meet recommended World Health Organization nutritional guidelines for infant and toddler foods. According to the study, 70% did not meet guidance on protein content, 25% failed to meet calorie recommendations, and 44% exceeded recommendations for total sugars. Up next, astronomers say a recently spotted fast-moving object in space could be the first of its kind. A celestial object spotted with help of citizen scientists was moving so fast through the Milky Way it could escape the galaxy's gravity and go intergalactic. The object, likely a faint red star, zoomed along at roughly 1.3 million miles per hour. By comparison, the sun orbits around the Milky Way at a rate of 450,000 miles per hour. Hypervelocity stars are extremely rare. If confirmed, this would be the first known hypervelocity, very low mass star. 30 more minutes of news, weather and sports is coming your way. Missouri Southern hosts a community fair to help connect its students with local businesses and resources. Plus, we'll meet a pair of kids in Quapaw, Oklahoma, selling bracelets to support area veterans.
You're watching the Four States Most Watched News. This is KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. I'm Tanya Bach. Businesses gathered in the halls at Missouri Southern today in search for new recruits. KOAM's Lonnie Walton has the story. Missouri Southern Community Fair gives students the opportunity to meet, greet, and learn from local organizations. I think this helped by just reaching out and just learning what everybody has to offer. So when I do graduate, I have a little more information about where I want to go. Even if people are looking for something other than a job, it's a space to collect new ideas. It's just to get me on the right path because they provide stuff that I need to learn now. And then it doesn't have to directly affect me, but I, I need to learn from whatever they offer. These companies put a lot of focus into education, so finding a place to honor students' college life isn't a problem. Uh, it's beneficial because I get to meet all the community members and the businesses that are willing to work with a school schedule. Although most companies are here to recruit potential new hires, some come just to bring awareness. The free STI and pregnancy clinic in the community. So we offer free testing and free early pregnancy verifications and ultrasounds um, to anybody. They don't have to be from Joplin. They can be all over the area. Some of the other things companies say they are looking for are people who work well with others and are compassionate. Reporting in Joplin, I'm Lonnie Walton, KOM News. Well, businesses at the fair also took contact information from some students so they could connect about future job opportunities. The city of Joplin announces a new program for new homeowners. The Joplin Homeowner Rehabilitation Program 2, or JHRP2, will act as part of the city's community revitalization efforts. The program offers qualifying homeowners up to $25,000 for critical home repairs, including roof and siding replacements, HVAC upgrades, and more. To find out more about available locations and to see if you qualify, just head over to KOAM newsnow.com. Well, brother and sister in Oklahoma are putting their business savvy to good use. KOAM's Anthony Saviello shares their story. Samuel and Sophia Ray have spent their summer raising money for local veterans by creating these. I spoke with the pair and their mother about these bracelets and how they've impacted the community around them. I cried. Yeah. <laughs> I was extremely proud. Um, that, that's the only thing I can say. I was, I was extremely proud. Tabitha Ray has good reason to be proud of her son Samuel and her daughter Sophia. The two of them have spent their summer trying to do some good. We wanted to help the veterans. Oh yeah? Okay. So why was that important to you? Because they helped us in the military. Yeah, when okay. they were deployed. Okay. For just two dollars a piece, the bracelets these two create are sold to raise money for local veterans. Recently, the two of them made an $800 donation to their local DAV. <laughs> didn't, I didn't expect it at all. I was very surprised when you said we made 800 <laughs> Because I would come home quite often and they sell more and more <laughs> every day right. and it was a huge surprise. Now they are capitalizing on what they have already done, using the money they make from now on to create care packages for deployed soldiers. I think I maybe my husband or myself mind. just kind of mentioned it's it and it's gonna be my they table. absolutely they were Your extremely excited to do that. Right. With the amount of attention these two have been getting, there may be a need to hire some extra hands. There you go. I made arm. the smallest bracelet <laughs> in the world. What do you think? That can be, it a, could be ring. a ring. It could be a ring. What do you think? Yeah. Awesome. Just High five. Boom. No matter who's helping, these two will continue to try and bring joy to those who have already sacrificed so much. The Ray family is looking for help trying to find deployed soldiers from Oklahoma to send their care packages to. If you know of one, you can find the link to this story on our website where you can get in contact with the Ray family. All right, thanks, Anthony. A little bit later, the search for wreckage. Divers discover more victims after a super yacht sunk off the coast of Sicily. I'm Madison Scarpino in London. More on that search coming up.
Well, of course, it turned out to be another great day for us today. Temperatures are uh, fantastic across the region. Really, we've had a pretty good stretch over the past several days. Nice shot of our Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex Tower Cam. We're looking uh, downtown Joplin off toward the northeast through downtown. Looks pretty good for us at this point in time. It's going to be pretty calm as we go through the overnight hours tonight. Lower 70s across the board. Very comfortable. We'll drop back. Lower 60s once again later on tonight. Plus, look at our dew points. So these are in a degree fashion. It measures how much humidity is out there. Now, when these climb above 70 in the summer months, it gets very sticky. You get into that muggy to soupy range, but we're sitting in that pleasant to not bad. And that's where we're going to be once again as we go into the daytime hours for us tomorrow. 73 right now, east northeasterly winds at about 5 to 10. And let's look at our temperatures over the next couple days because we start a slow warming trend. Partly cloudy skies, lower 60s to start. There could be a random sprinkle out there as we go through the daytime hours tomorrow. Upper 70s by noon. Most of us will top out mid 80s once again. Very similar to what we did see today. Tomorrow night, clear skies back into lower 60s once again as we go into Friday afternoon. A little bit hotter. Most of us are going to top out right around 90 or 91 degrees. Not hot, uh, but right about where we should be for this time of the year. Day planner on Thursday, 61, 78 by noon, 83 by 4, high temp of 85 degrees. So another great day. That's what we made it up to today. We have clear skies. Nothing is going on across the entire central plains. We're still watching big dome of high pressure kind of shoving its way back toward the south and to the west and around it we get these little waves that rotate through keeping us at least with chances for occasional showers and thunderstorms which we are going to see by the weekend here's friday night band rolls through then a hot hot saturday partly sunny skies mid 90s another band of showers and thunderstorms saturday night into sunday morning and then again hot and humid once we get into the afternoon partly sunny skies let's look at monday morning thunderstorms and then again, partly sunny skies, hot and humid, mid 90s once we get into the afternoon. So with those rounds over the weekend, we'll have to see where those heavier bands set up. Looks like the heaviest will be central eastern Missouri, but a lot of us could pick up a quarter, half an inch, maybe a little bit more than that, which, hey, would be perfectly fine. We do kind of dry out on Tuesday, hot, Wednesday, hot. But once we get into Thursday and Friday, we get a cold front that starts to advance in. So this is going to give us better chances for rain late next week. But the big key here, it's also going to cool us down a bit as we head into the holiday weekend because not this weekend, but next weekend is Labor Day weekend. 85 on your Thursday again. Could get a few sprinkles, maybe a random shower. 91 on Friday, mid 90s as we head into the weekend, hit and miss storms um, up to 97 on Wednesday. And then we start to cool back down a bit as we go into the holiday weekend, but overall pretty typical for the last third of August. Thanks, Doug, and don't forget you can be the first to know about the day's weather with the KOEM Skywatch weather app. Get severe weather updates sent straight to your phone free of charge. It's available in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store, the KOEM Skywatch weather app. Well, coming up in sports, Pittsburgh High School alum Chase Curtis is named captain of the TCU football team. Plus, Chiefs play-by-play -play broadcaster Mitch Holtis previews the 2024 NFL season. John Dales has those stories and more up next. Pittsburgh High School class of 2018 graduate Chase Curtis has had a whirlwind of a college athletic career, which began as a baseball player, then transitioned to football and entering his seventh year of collegiate athletics. Curtis is named captain of a Big 12 football team. TCU Athletics announces this week that Chase Curtis is one of six captains for the Horned Frog football team chosen by his teammates. Curtis was a first-team All-State selection in football, basketball, and baseball at PHS. He chose to play baseball at Neosho County Community College for two seasons before transferring to TCU and walking onto the football team. Curtis played quarterback for the Purple Dragons but switched to tight end in college after putting on more than 50 pounds. 
Here's a timeline of Curtis's collegiate career. You see the two seasons playing baseball at Neosho County Community College, then the transfer to TCU, spending two years as a walk-on. Curtis earned a scholarship and had a breakthrough season in 2022, playing in all 15 of TCU's games while they made a run to the national championship. In 2023, he became the Horn Frogs' second tight end on their depth chart, playing in eight games and accumulating over 100 receiving yards before a season-ending injury. Back here in the four states, Missouri Southern's Deontay Campbell enters 2024 as one of the top Division II tight ends in the entire country. This morning, MSSU tight end Deontay Campbell gets named to the 2025 Senior Bowl watch list, which identifies the best draft prospects at every level of college football. Campbell is one of two tight ends from all of Division II to be added to that list along with 44 others, all from Division I schools. The Senior Bowl takes place in Mobile, Alabama on February 1st. And tomorrow night, the two-time defending Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs play their final preseason game against the Chicago Bears. The voice of the Chiefs, Mitch Holtis, stopped by the KOAM studio today for a one-on-one -on -one interview previewing the upcoming season and answering questions like where does Super Bowl 58 rank on his all-time list? And honestly, it's like, which child do you love the most? Every Super Bowl victory has its own unique uh, theme, if you will, but this one to win it back to back. And I remember the night before the game thinking, if they do win it, what do I say? It's been not quite 20 years, but that doesn't sound right. So I figured out it's 6,944 days. But to win it in overtime, to get to that back to back Super Bowl championship, and this is the way it happened, and then setting it up with what happened in the week succeeding it, it's like watching, binge watching Ted Lasso. And even Ted Lasso's writers couldn't write that script. And people can watch that full interview on our website, koamnewsnow.com slash sports. Mitch is a wealth of football knowledge and Chiefs knowledge, so a lot of good stuff in there. What are uh, one of the biggest highlights of things that he talked about today? He talked one thing about uh, something that Andy Reid has, a play, a certain play that we haven't seen yet, but he says when he runs it, everybody's going to be running it. Ooh, I'm excited to find out what that is. Yeah, me too. All right, we'll be back with more news after this. Divers continue to search the wreck of a super yacht that capsized off the coast of Sicily this week. Rescue workers say they have recovered multiple bodies in their search for the missing, which included some titans in the tech and financial industries. Fox News correspondent Madison Scarpino has more. Divers recovering multiple bodies from the wreck of a super yacht off the coast of Sicily on Wednesday. Among those missing, British tech entrepreneur Mike Lynch and his 18-year-old daughter, as well as members of a team that recently helped clear Lynch in a federal fraud trial. This whole incident is, I think, unprecedented. Their ship sunk early Monday when it capsized near the port of Porticello, where it was anchored. Officials say they believe the vessel was struck by a tornado over the water when most would have been sleeping. When you're at anchor, even if it's blowing with a storm in the Mediterranean, you, you rarely shut the whole boat down because nobody expects something like this to happen. More than half of those on board escaped in a lifeboat. Military ships, underwater vehicles and helicopters have been aiding divers in the search for victims. But rescue workers say the depth and position of the 184 foot yacht have made that process challenging. Investigators are now interviewing the survivors as they work to answer questions about how the ship sunk so quickly. What's particularly um, surprising is that those vessels are built with watertight subcompartment. For the vessel to sink, especially this fast, you are really looking at taking water on board very quickly. And in an unrelated event, Lynch's co-defendant in the fraud trial died Sunday. He was hit by a car while running in England. In London, Madison Scarpino, Fox News. Well, coming up, we'll check out Ronda Rousey's entrance into the world of graphic novels. Ronda Rousey is going from the ring to the writer's room. She's working on a new action-packed graphic novel which draws on her life and career. Now, Rousey joined Fox's Ashley Dvorkin to talk about expecting the unexpected. 
UFC and WWE superstar Ronda Rousey is making her graphic novel debut with the action rom-com Expecting the Unexpected. I had been being really passive about my film career and I thought, you know, like, you know what, I should, I should pull a Sylvester Stallone and write my own Rocky. So um, that's what this started as. Rousey says screenwriting became an outlet. It just kind of became a place where I could take all my like anxious mental energy and put it towards something creative. She decided the story would make a great graphic novel and teamed up with comic book artist Mike Diodato Jr. I love fight choreography. That's why I got it in pro wrestling, everything like that. So I, I choreographed all of this, which is the story is basically knocked up meets John Wick. The book is inspired by aspects of her life. I was trying to think of what is a role that is so me that no one could play it better than me. And I was trying to get pregnant at the time. And so I was like, oh, pregnant assassin. <laughs> then came another kind of training. I had friends of mine recommend all the different kinds of books and content and things. And when I felt like I couldn't take my education any farther, I, uh, I, I pulled my weight and I got myself an internship at the WME story department and uh, started writing script coverages. An additional project came out of it too. I ended up writing my own biopic screenplay in eight days during my book tour and just sold it to Netflix. She sees this as her next chapter. Everything I've done before takes a toll on my body and I can't do it while, you know, I'm pregnant or what, until I, like, you know, get older. And I've had arthritis since I was 19. I've had three athletic careers. It would be nice to be able to segue on something that isn't ripping my ligaments to shreds. In Hollywood, Ashley Dvorkin, Fox News. Might have to grab a copy of that. And that's our time for tonight. Thanks for joining us. We're going to leave you with video of a pair of porcupine brothers celebrating their first birthday at a zoo in Australia. Have a great night and an even better tomorrow.